This morning on CBS 2 News, looking ahead after the 2022 primary, we have a full breakdown of election results for you this morning straight ahead. Plus, emphasizing the importance of standing up to hate. A look at the vigil for the Buffalo supermarket shooting right here in Boise. And a local church showing support for Ukraine, how much money they raised from a local benefit concert, and how those funds will help with relief efforts overseas. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to CBS 2 News. You're looking live outside in downtown Boise on this Wednesday. It is May 18th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Denny Hawkins. And I'm Sarah Jacobson. Yeah, one of the things I realized we missed yesterday, Denny, was that yesterday was Idaho Day. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Guys, a well, beautiful we missed day. It and, yeah, and the weather literally couldn't have been more perfect. But the good news is we still yeah. have time. If you weren't able, if you were unaware, we're not able to go enjoy, you know, all of our state has to offer. Luckily today, still looking good, right, Nate? Yeah, so yesterday was picture perfect with the sunshine, the mid-70s. Uh, today we do have comfortable temperatures again. Let's kind of check in with the morning drive. We do have some high clouds out there. Really little impact, though. Dry roads this morning, about 50 as you head out at 7 and 55 at 8 o'clock. So green lights today. And yeah, as Sarah had said, things are still looking pretty phenomenal. Uh, at least currently this morning, there is westerly flow in place and you can see moisture off to the west of us. Uh, that moisture will impact some of our northern mountain areas. We will see clouds increase throughout the afternoon as well. In fact, this is right around lunchtime. So uh, partly cloudy skies to mostly cloudy into the afternoon. Spotty rain showers over the northern mountain areas. Temperature wise, though, we're still rather comfortable, if not getting warm this afternoon with highs still in the upper 70s. So yeah, adventure cast today. We're going to get out and do a little uh, biking along the foothills about 59 as you head out at 9 o'clock, 70 degrees at lunchtime, so already pretty comfortable with those partly cloudy conditions. And then winds are going to pick up some later this evening as temperatures are near 78 degrees. Plan on overcast skies and winds of about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, it's all ahead of a cold front. We'll talk about just how big the drop is into Thursday with our temperature trend. Details coming up. Thank you, Nate. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Very quiet out there this morning, this AM, but everything looking good. Maybe just a light jacket to get you out the door, but a beautiful day ahead, as Nate said. So when you do eventually have to get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. All right, well, of course, we start this morning with results from last night's primary election here in Idaho. Here are the unofficial results from some of Idaho's key races. Let's take a look. First up, the Republican race for governor. The AP projects that incumbent Brad Little has won the GOP primary for Idaho's top job. Today's the day the voters get to have their say and I couldn't be happier with the results. Well, I wish Janice the best. Uh, she's still going to be Lieutenant Governor till January, so uh, I will continue to work with her and I wish her the best going forward. The governor says he's now turning his attention to the November election. His focus will be on improving roads, tax relief and education. Now, there were three candidates in the race for lieutenant governor. Latest results with 86% 80 of precincts reporting show Scott Bedke uh, at 52% uh, of the vote there with the lead. Bedke most recently served as Speaker of the House. And let's take, let's take a look at the GOP race for Secretary of State. That's between Phil McGrain, Dorothy Moon, and Mary Souza. Now, McGrain holds 43% of the vote, while Dorothy Moon held 41%. At just over 15% of the vote, we have Mary Souza. Now, Phil McGrain is is managing to maintain his lead. Now, CBS2 did speak to him overnight. He states that he hopes the use of the position will lead the way for election security. And being able to show that Idaho really stands out across the country in terms of what we're doing to protect our elections. At the same time, there really is a lot we can do, especially with technology becoming a bigger part of all of this, to make sure it's both secure, but also it really serves the voters at the end of the day. And moving on in the Republican race for Attorney General, incumbent Lawrence Wasden was being challenged by Raul Labrador and Arthur McAmer. Now, right now, unofficial results show Labrador with the lead, currently with 51% of the vote. A victory in this race would unseat Idaho's longest-serving Attorney General. And one of the biggest races of the night, the GOP race for Superintendent of Public Instruction. That was between Debbie Critchfield, Brandon Durst, and incumbent Sherry Ibarra. Now, this is as Idaho slipped to last per, in per pupil funding for education. Now, this year, Debbie Critchfield took home the most votes with over 39%, Brandon Durst at 33%, and Sherry Ibarra at just over 26%. And the AP projects that Mike Crapo is the winner of the Republican nomination for U.S. Senate. There were several candidates running. Crapo currently with 67% of the vote. Again, 86% of precincts reporting at this hour. 
Now, the AP also projecting that Mike Simpson has won the Republican nomination for U.S. House in Idaho's 2nd Congressional District. He got over 55% of the vote. Now, Brian Smith took home second with over 33% of the vote. And Idaho's Democratic primary had a lot of uncontested races, but a few highlights to show you. There was a contested race for U.S. Senator between David Roth and Ben Persley. Uh, David Roth coming away with 58% of the vote so far. Again, 86% of precincts reporting this morning. In the governor's race, Stephen Height was up against a number of different writing candidates, including Sandpoint Mayor Shelby Rognestad. Unofficial results show that Height won just over 80% of the vote. Meanwhile, Terry Pickens Manweiler won the nomination for lieutenant governor. Well, yesterday's election was the result of weeks of preparation at our local elections offices across the gem state. Now, Ada County Clerk Trent Triple says he's proud of how things went. It's it's really one of the largest events that takes place in Ada County. We had 1,200 volunteers, you know, 90,000 people participate. Uh, that's a that's a big thing for Ada County, uh, and we're proud of that. We're proud that we were able to pull it off uh, in a way that people hopefully uh, builds trust in in how we held out the election. Triple says that things went smoother this year, and he's um, crediting that to redistricting efforts. Now, previously, elections officers, they had to count up about 2,500 of the people's votes per precinct. With those new boundaries, that number is now down to about 1,500. It also means shorter lines and a smoother process for voters. Now, Triple says he hopes things go just as smooth come November. Well, stay with us, of course, for continuing coverage of these unofficial election results as more of those precincts come in. We'll have updated numbers all morning for you here on air and on our website, IdahoNews.com. And, of course, you can download the CBS2 mobile app to get those alerts sent straight to your smartphone. Well, happening today, Boise Mayor Lauren McLean will give her State of the City address. Now, the speech, it will be live streamed or you can watch it at the community fair. That's going to be at Jump Plaza. That fair runs from about 3 to 6 tonight. And the mayor's speech will be shown on the Jumbotron. Developing news, funerals for victims of that mass shooting in Buffalo, New York last weekend could start as soon as this weekend. Ten people were killed when an 18-year-old gunman opened fire in a grocery store on Saturday. Investigators say the attack was a racially motivated hate crime. President Biden also calling it an act of domestic terrorism. Now He and the First Lady visited the crime scene yesterday to pay their respects and offer comfort to the victims' families. The day is going to come. It will come when your loved one brings a smile as you remember him or her. Meanwhile, investigators are still combing through the scene for evidence and also looking into the suspect's online activity. They say he made posts indicating that he started planning this attack several months ago. CBS News has also learned that some of the writings included other possible targets, such as elementary schools, churches, and Hasidic Jewish communities. Now, the suspect will be back in court for a felony hearing tomorrow. Well, people gathered at the Anne Frank Memorial yesterday to condemn those that recent shooting in Buffalo, New York. Now, their speakers, they emphasize the importance of standing up to hate. We as a collective community have to push away from the language that divides us, the language that, that allows us to see somebody as another and slowly allows us or allows someone to see a member of the community as less than them, less than human. You can find a photo gallery of the event on our website. Just head to IdahoNews.com. Well, Cathedral of the Rockies is giving a big check to members of the Slavic community. More than $112,000 was raised during a community concert for Ukrainian relief back in April. Now, Nick Anderson, a member of the choir at Cathedral of the Rockies, presented that check. Now, in a matter of weeks, he gathered eight choirs, four instrumental groups, two contemporary groups to put on the April 29th show. Now, the money will now go towards medical supplies and food for those in eastern Ukraine. I hope that uh, in addition to just the music uh, touching people that uh, they find that this is a way that they can help in a tangible way. Again, that was $12,000, just a correction. Now, Cathedral of the Rockies is organizing another Ukrainian relief concert as of September. Yeah, Almost cool 13,000. I know. Well, I, yeah, I, guess, I know. I, I know. As I, say, when, as I squinted at the thing, I was like, oh, that was a nine. $12,965. Yeah. Right. Pretty incredible. 
Yeah, great amount. And yeah, if they do it again, it'd be awesome to see, you know, if we can generate even more. Uh, I think it's one of those situations that, yeah, I mean, things pop up. We've obviously, there are a lot of other headlines we're paying attention to these days, but we know there is still a lot of pain and suffering going on overseas. So uh, love seeing our community still continue to step up to help. Yeah, great to see them come together for that. Yeah. Maybe uh, yesterday would have been a great event to kind of be outside fundraising or yeah, running or running from, <laughs> I don't know, whatever you wanted to do because it's just so nice out there. So uh, we've got another nice day in store today. I wanted to show you, we have talked to, or we teased about a big temperature drop, a swing uh, heading into tomorrow. So uh, today, another warm day ahead of the storm system. It's a weak storm for the valley in terms of precipitation, but it certainly is going to pack a punch with our temperatures heading into Thursday. So upper 70s expected again today. Westerly flow is in place transitioning to northwest flow into Thursday behind a series of fronts, dropping us to just 57 tomorrow. 66 on Friday, low 70s back uh, for the weekend. So it's a, a short term as far as the uh, tr drop goes. Chilly temperatures expected into Friday morning, as you can imagine, for overnight lows uh, in the mid to upper 30s. So might be one of those mornings you need to cover up or Thursday evening into Friday, cover up any sensitive vegetation if you do have any outside. Uh, so turning cloudy out there today and windy. Pretty nice conditions as you head out early. Showers up over the northern mountain areas are expected throughout some of the afternoon and evening, but dry weather here in the valley. Windy conditions on Thursday after breezy conditions this afternoon. In fact, a good 15 to 25 mile per hour winds expected for much of the valley. Could see gusts up to 35, 40 miles per hour. And then again, those cooler temperatures are to be in store as well. Wanted to show you some of the wind speeds. Quiet conditions throughout much of the day. This is about 2 o'clock. Starting to see some elevated winds. Again, generally 10 to 15 miles per hour. Stronger winds over southeast Oregon. And then on Thursday, the winds are really going to be howling out of the northwest. Notice good 20, 25 mile per hour winds expected across the valley. This is 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Stronger winds expected southeast of Boise near Mountain Home and in the south central part of the valley. So, yeah, hang on to your hats. Uh, breezy today, but blustery, if not uh, just windy tomorrow. Yeah, so get outside today, enjoy it. But yeah. if you want to be windblown, tomorrow will be your Or day. take the kite out, as Denny <laughs> likes to do. You know? Or kite surfing. I saw people kite yeah. surfing at Lake Lowell over the weekend. That was cool. That was so, some pretty, actually, you need to post that because that was some pretty spectacular some pretty cool, footage. All right, I showed, I showed <laughs> Sarah some of the photos. So, yeah, pretty, pretty tricky. Yeah, get outside and enjoy it. <laughs> CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring it. Team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Everything very quiet. All of our main roads and secondary roads running smoothly. So when you do eventually have to get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. All right, straight ahead this morning, the future of interest rates in the U.S., why the Fed is planning more hikes despite growing fears of a recession. Plus, new bills heading through Washington this week, what lawmakers hope to accomplish with another round of federal spending. All right, question of the day. We're going to look back at yesterday's question first. Surprisingly, this American item was created by a Canadian. Literally, American was in the name, but it was created by a Canadian. Love I know. We, we should have known, but it, I, I couldn't even believe it. American cheese, guys. <laughs> it's Canadian. All right. Now for today's question, a study says that the average American, they now spend 26 minutes a day doing this. All right, folks, what mm. is it? All right, 514 on your Wednesday. Welcome back. Local forecast. This one for Nampa. Temperatures today. Yeah, we should reach upper 70s, right near 80 degrees, even with cloud cover increasing throughout the afternoon. So pretty quiet conditions through midday. Plan on uh, light winds, but breezy winds later this afternoon as well. Mostly cloudy overnight, 49. And tomorrow, yeah, we've got a cold front that's going to be sweeping through overnight into Thursday. We're just 56 for the high on Thursday. Might see a trickle uh, or stray shower trickle through the Treasure Valley. Otherwise, plan on blustery winds throughout much of the day tomorrow. Thanks, Nate. Stocks are down in pre-market trading this morning, but despite volatility on Wall Street in recent weeks, the Federal Reserve is planning more interest rate hikes. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell uh, spoke at a recent event saying that short-term interest rates will continue to climb until there is clear and convincing evidence that inflation is coming down. Raising rates, of course, helps curb inflation by slowing consumer spending in theory, but there are also concerns it may lead to a recession. Well, you're looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where federal lawmakers are on a spending spree. Legislation is coming our way, and Amy Kiley has a look at three funding bills that they're currently considering. Three high-profile spending bills are moving through Congress this week. They'd provide funding to help Ukraine, to address the baby formula shortage, and to support small businesses still recovering from the pandemic. The Senate is expected to pass a Ukraine aid package Thursday. Strong bipartisan support for this funding in the House and in the Senate, but also 
ensurance that we have effective oversight of our assistance to Ukraine. That bipartisan support might be harder to find for two other funding bills Congress is considering. Now these same big spenders are proposing another $50 billion next week to bail out restaurants. Restaurants that have been primarily injured by overzealous Democrat governors and their edicts. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is fast-tracking a bill to help restaurants, bars and other businesses still struggling due to the pandemic. It's unlikely to get the 60 votes needed to pass. Some Republicans support it, but Democratic Senator Joe Manchin says he probably won't. Over in the House. Mothers across the country are looking to us for help. And we will not force them to face this crisis on their own. Democrats want $28 million to try to ease the baby formula shortage. Most of it would pay for more FDA workers to inspect production facilities. Republican Senator John Cornyn has said he thinks focusing on the supply chain could be more effective. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. All right, well, it might be tough to smile when you're buying groceries these days, but MasterCard is preparing to launch a new payment system that could require it. So it's called PayFace. The program uh, would allow people to pay for goods using a smile or a wave. It's kind of the same facial recognition technology that unlocks smartphones. A pilot program launches this week in Brazil. Okay, so it has to be a smile, like, because I'd want to be I know, like a mean I, mug or something. I was trying you know, to, like, like read a... other articles for a little bit more information because <laughs> I was like, do, we, do, we, do I really have to smile? <sighs> Like on our driver's licenses, they, this don't, is let like, they don't let you smile. I and I always thing. thought that I was get weird. I that every time. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, close that mouth. No smiling. Don't well, want to see Well, and I always thought that was weird because I'm like, can't your teeth kind of be like an identifying feature? Like, and I feel like that like makes your face. Yes. Like, I like what if I like show up somewhere wow. like with someone else's ID and then, you know, I'm missing a bunch of teeth. Couldn't they be like, uh, this isn't you? Maybe that's why <laughs> like, they don't want you to smile in case you like. Get your teeth knocked out and then like, wait, yeah, but you should have the safety. option yeah. to smile. Yeah. I know there's a reason for it. I just, yeah. if I'm going to smile, I'd rather smile like this than like this. Like yeah, the creepy, no. like, like grind Denny's gears. Oh, I feel like uh, I look at the Grinch the in my photo. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, I, kind of like that smile that like curves up like this. All right, we're going to yeah. have to post this driver's license. No, no, so no, can no see not. absolutely Den not. Over like. my dead body. Oh, okay. All right, let's find her first. Not that we're going to rummage through it or anything, but hey, all right, folks. Yeah, uh, let's get a let's get a uh, poll going for Denny's uh, Denny's driver's license photo. Get that posted. So, all right, folks. Hey, looking outside, quiet weather this morning. We do have some of the uh, high clouds, as I mentioned, moving through the area, but otherwise, just just phenomenal start uh, to your Wednesday. Temperature wise, we're about 50 degrees here in Boise, 45 in Nampa. 48 in Mountain Home. Good morning to you. 36 in McCall. So, yep, still cold again up in the Long Valley. These temperatures are pretty typical for this time of year. In fact, normal low is about 48 for Boise, 73 for our high. We're going to be above average to the upper 70s this afternoon. We do have some clouds on the rise and breezy winds today ahead of a front. It's going to sweep through and drop temperatures drastically on Thursday. In fact, you're going to feel the difference tomorrow, just 57 for the high. And we might see a spotty shower here in the valley. Not a real uh, big threat tomorrow, mainly in the mountain area for some additional rain and snow. Windy conditions though on Thursday, 15 to 25 mile per hour winds tomorrow. On Friday, mostly sunny, 66, low 70s over the weekend. A mix of sun and clouds over the weekend as well. And we're going to continue that trend into next week with mid 70s Monday and Tuesday. Mountain forecast plan on some showers later this afternoon and evening. Uh, light precipitations expected 59 today down to 46 tomorrow. Rain snow showers uh, expected tomorrow, maybe even a thunderstorm. And we're going to keep that slight chance of a rain shower over the northern mountain areas Friday and Saturday. Temperatures climbing back to 56 should be in the low 60s uh, into early next week with about 60 with partly cloudy skies Tuesday as well. Not too bad. Heading out the door this morning. Anything? Yeah, just plan on uh, mild temperatures. You got the heater on possibly this morning in the car, but again, all windows down again this afternoon. Yep, no, a real 180 on conditions. Yeah, it feels nice out there. <laughs> yes, it does. All right, thank you, Nate. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, everything's still looking really good out there. Um, smooth sailing, looking at all of our main roads, even secondary roads, uh, looking nice out there. A few more headlights, but nothing to worry about. When you do eventually have to get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Coming up this morning, kids aged 5 to 11 could be eligible for a COVID booster soon. We'll look at what has to happen before the shot's approved and why experts say the decision could come just in time. Plus, vaccination rates aren't making much progress. Why Americans are still hesitant to get the vaccine this far along into the pandemic.
Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 523 on your Wednesday. Welcome back. The FDA has authorized coronavirus booster shots for kids 5 to 11 years old. Now it's the first time the agency has approved an extra dose for that age group and health experts say that the move comes just in time. Now, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, COVID cases dropped to their lowest point in early April, but since then they've jumped by 260%. It's time for kids to be considered for boosters because we know immunity starts to wane in around four to five months. Now, the final decision will be made by the CDC. Its vaccine advisory committee will meet tomorrow to discuss the issue. Meanwhile, a new survey shows the U.S. has made very little progress in getting people against the COVID vaccines to change their minds. Medical reporter Liz Bonus breaks down the findings. Hey there, everybody. About one in six of us say we are definitely not going to get the COVID-19 vaccine, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, a number that has not changed in more than a year. That's a problem if you look at the latest CDC numbers. About 66% of us are fully vaccinated. But the death rates continue to climb, mainly in people who are not vaccinated. The problem is even greater in children. The FDA just authorized boosters for children 5 to 11, but Ohio's Cincinnati Children's Hospital Infectious Disease Specialists say most haven't gotten the first series of shots. Maybe 30% um, have been vaccinated, which means 70% have not been vaccinated. The Kaiser survey data shows the size of the group that says they are not getting vaccinated has not changed in the last year. Many who say no say they don't trust the mainstream media and they choose their own sources of what is true. I think part of it, too, is that people just emotionally are done with COVID. They just don't want to hear about it anymore. They don't want to think about it anymore. But, well, we're not thinking about it. Dr. Robert Frank says the virus is still mutating or changing. The concern is that it could make a variant that's even worse than the Omicron. If that happens, Dr. Frank says it will also be worse for those not vaccinated, whether we are tired of it or not. Your own health care provider, of course, the best person to use as a resource about the vaccine. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Well, mental health is a big concern among experts. Now, treatment is in huge demand in recent years. No surprise there, especially for those with conditions like anxiety and depression. But finding a counselor can actually be really challenging, even overwhelming. So if you're considering looking for help, here are some tips. Make sure you check online directories like Psychology Today, Shrink Space, and the National Board of Certified Counselors. Understand the difference between therapy providers and make sure you're getting the help you need. Your counselor will be able to help you identify goals within navigating your anxiety. And then not only that, they will be able to support you along the way as you work to reach your goal. Now, if you don't find the right fit in a counselor, it's okay to keep looking. Once you start counseling, Dr. Jacoby says set clear goals for you. For example, if you're dealing with anxiety, it's also important to talk about the cost of care before starting treatment. Some health insurances will cover a portion of that cost, but ask your insurance to cover or your provider for you to pick. All right, coming up on CBS News, searching for answers in the Buffalo supermarket shooting. The additional targets investigators say the suspect had his eye on. And here's a look at our primetime lineup. Join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And your question of the day. Take a look. Share your guesses with us on Facebook or Twitter. This morning on CBS 2 News, we're looking ahead after the 2022 primary, a full breakdown of unofficial election results straight ahead this morning. Plus, emphasizing the importance of standing up to hate. A look at the vigil for the Buffalo supermarket shooting right here in Boise. And a local church showing support for Ukraine, how much money they raised from a local benefit concert, and how those funds will help with relief efforts overseas. CBS 2 News this morning starts now.
All right, folks, uh, good Wednesday morning. Let's check in with those frosted weather weeds. Get you started on the uh, middle of the work week. Heading out the door, we do have some high clouds. Otherwise, pretty comfortable temperatures still. Pretty close to average for the uh, this time of morning. About 50 degrees as you head out early to about 55 at 8 o'clock. Plan on uh, cloud cover increasing throughout the day. We've got a system off towards the northwest of us that's going to move in within the westerly flow that we have here in southwest Idaho. And so you can see it's bringing fairly widespread shower activity across the uh, Pacific Northwest. Some of the showers will make their way into the West Central Mountains, possibly the Boise Mountains, but they're just hugging our northern mountain regions as they move in this afternoon and evening with clouds uh, moving through the Treasure Valley along with still mild temperatures. So uh, a front will sweep through overnight, drop temperatures into Thursday, bring some scattered rain snow showers over the mountain areas. So plan on uh, more active weather tomorrow. Today on the quieter side, uh, about 70 degrees with the 9 to 5 forecast at lunchtime and by this afternoon, 78 Winds a little breezy this afternoon and evening, about 10 to 15 miles an hour as well. Thank you, Nate. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, live look out there along I-84 this morning. Everything is looking good, running smoothly. Um, yeah, nothing to really note out here. So when you do eventually have to get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we start this morning with results from last night's primary elections here in Idaho. Yeah, here are the unofficial results from some of Idaho's key races. Now, first up is the Republican race for governor. The AP projects that incumbent Brad Little has won the GOP primary for Idaho's top job. Today's the day the voters get to have their say, and I couldn't be happier with the results. Well, I wish Janice the best. Uh, she's still going to be lieutenant governor till January, so uh, I will continue to work with her, and I wish her the best going forward. The governor says he's now turning his attention to the November election. His focus will now be on improving roads, tax relief and education. Well, there were three candidates in the race for lieutenant governor showing you the latest results with 86% of precincts reporting. Scott Bedke in the lead with 52% of the vote right now. Priscilla Giddings coming in with 42%. Now, if he wins, Bedke most recently served as Speaker of the House. And let's take a look at the GOP race for Secretary of State. That's between Phil McGrain, Dorothy Moon, and Mary Souza. Now, overall, Phil McGrain has, is leading with 43% of the vote. Dorothy Moon at 41%. Mary Souza just taking in about 15%. Now, Phil McGrain is the lead in this race. CBS2 spoke to him overnight. He states that he hopes to use the position to lead the way for election security. And being able to show that Idaho really stands out across the country in terms of what we're doing to protect our elections. At the same time, there really is a lot we can do, especially with technology becoming a bigger part of all of this, to make sure it's both secure, but also it really serves the voters at the end of the day. Well, in the Republican race for Attorney General, incumbent Lawrence Wasden was being challenged by Raul Labrador and Arthur McAmer. Right now, unofficial results show Labrador in the lead with 51% of the vote compared to Wasden's 38%. Now, a victory here would upseat Idaho's longest-serving Attorney General. Well, one of the biggest races of the night, the GOP race for Superintendent of Public Instruction. Now, that was between Debbie Critchfield, Brandon Durst, and incumbent Sherry Yabara. Now, right now, Debbie Critchfield is in the lead, looking at 40% of that boat. Brandon Durst sitting at 34%. Sherry Ibarra sitting at just 27%. Well, the AP projects Mike Crapo will be the winner of the Republican nomination for U.S. Senate. There were several candidates running against him. Crapo, though, has 67 percent of the vote. And the AP also projects that Mike Simpson has won the Republican nomination for U.S. House of Idaho's 2nd Congressional District with 55 percent of the vote. Brian Smith at second with 33 percent. Idaho's Democratic primary had a lot of uncontested races, but we'll show you a couple of the highlights anyways. There was a contested race for U.S. Senator between David Roth and Ben Persley. Uh, David Roth coming in right now with 58% of the vote there. In the governor's race, Stephen Height was up against a number of riding candidates, including Sandpoint Mayor Shelby Rognestad. Now, unofficial results so show that uh, Height won with just 80%, just over 80% of the vote, excuse me. Meanwhile, Terry Pickens Manweiler won the nomination for lieutenant governor. Well, yesterday's election was the result of weeks of preparation at local elections offices all around the state. Ada County Clerk Trent Triple said he's proud of how things went around here. It's, it's really one of the largest events that takes place in Ada County. We had 1,200 volunteers, you know, 90,000 people participate. Uh, that's, a, that's a big thing for Ada County. Uh, and we're proud of that. We're proud that we were able to pull it off uh, in a way that people hopefully uh, builds trust in, in how we held out the election. 
So Triple says things went smoother this year thanks to redistricting efforts. So previously, elections officers had to count up to about 2,500 people's votes per precinct. With the new boundaries, that number's down to about 1,500, which of course also means, in theory, shorter lines and a smoother process for voters. Triple says he hopes things go just as smoothly come November. And stay with us for continuing coverage of these unofficial election results. If things change, if any more precincts start reporting this morning, we will have those updated numbers for you here on air and on our website, IdahoNews.com. You can also download the CBS2 mobile app to have alerts sent straight to your smartphone. Well, happening today, Boise Mayor Lauren McLean will give her State of the City address. Now, the speech will be live streamed or you can watch it at the community fair at Jump Plaza. Now, the fair is from 3 to 6 today and the mayor's speech will be shown on the Jumbotron. Developing news this morning, funerals for victims of a mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, could begin as soon as this weekend. Ten people were killed when the gunman, an 18-year-old, opened fire in a grocery store on Saturday. Investigators say the attack was a racially motivated hate crime. President Biden also called it an act of domestic terrorism. He and the First Lady visited the crime scene yesterday to pay their respects and offer comfort to the victims' families. The day is going to come. It will come when your loved one brings a smile as you remember him or her. Meanwhile, investigators are still combing through that scene for additional evidence and looking into the suspect's activity online. They say he did make posts indicating that he started planning this attack several months ago. CBS News has also learned that some of the writings included other possible targets, such as elementary schools, churches, and Hasidic Jewish communities. The suspect, suspect excuse me, will be back in court for a felony hearing tomorrow. Well, people gathered at the Anne Frank Memorial yesterday to condemn the recent shooting in Buffalo, New York. Now, their speakers, they emphasize the importance of standing up to hate. This could have happened here. It could happen here. If we are not clearer and more strident in our own use of words, in our own calling out the hate that exists, that's Boise Mayor McLean. Now you can find a photo gallery of the event on our website. Just head to IdahoNews.com. Well, Cathedral of the Rockies is giving a big check to members of the Slavic community. More than $12,000 raised during the community concert for Ukrainian relief back in April. Now Nick Anderson, a member of the choir at Cathedral of the Rockies, presented that check. Now in a matter of weeks, he gathered about eight choirs, four instrumental groups, and two contemporary groups to put on the April 29th show. Now this money will go towards medical supplies and foods for those in eastern Ukraine. I hope that uh, in addition to just the music uh, touching people that uh, they find that this is a way that they can help in a tangible way. And they're not stopping. Cathedral of the Rockies is organizing another Ukrainian relief concert. It's set for September. All right, something Let's else to look forward to, yeah. Well, election night, obviously a uh, busy night here in our newsrooms. We yes. were never part of it, but we always get to enjoy the, uh, oh, perhaps yeah. the best piece of it is the Post leftover election, election night pizza. pizza. This yes. is a thing, it whether is. it be our newsroom or right, hopefully every other newsroom in the yeah. Treasure Valley as they yeah. kind of go through election night, a long night for so many of our staffers, but uh, we I get to reap the benefits. Yeah. yeah, there I'm was a whole Canadian bacon down. pizza there waiting for me this morning. Yeah, yeah. did you guys have your pre-show pizza? I like, did, and, well, now I'm, and now my stomach during hurts. Show, during show pizza is what I had. So last, oh, last yeah. hit I was trying to you know, get rid of the uh, <laughs> leftovers in my mouth. He's but got it in his teeth and he's trying to get on get on camera in time for his hit. So, yeah, it's always, at least they put it in the fridge. There's been they previous did. times yes. where it's been left out and you're like, should I eat this? Yeah, yeah, we're still going to eat it. You the know. answer probably is always no yeah. with like pizza. Like we just don't need it, but it just sounded so good. And now yeah. I'm like paying the price. Yeah. <laughs> so. There's still boxes upstairs. So, uh, yeah, we'll have more to go indulge later, in more maybe. later. Yeah, yep. Uh, <laughs> all right, folks. Yeah, I had, hopefully you're having something a little healthier as your uh, breakfast this morning. But uh, I guess pizza, I'm going to say that that's healthy. It's nutritious. Uh, high temperatures. It had pineapple on it. Yeah, it's got fruit on it. So maybe you're going to grab a pizza this afternoon, head outside, enjoy some warm temperatures. In fact, we're above average again today. We're expecting upper 70s for a lot of the valley. Even some low 80s. Ontario possibly 80. Mountain home 80 degrees. 78 Nampa and Caldwell 56 in the uh, Long Valley. Expecting some showers over the northern mountain areas. So not quite as warm as yesterday. Uh, and temperatures yet, yeah, we're not going to stay where we are today. We're dropping significantly tomorrow. In fact, a good 20 degrees 
degrees cooler Thursday thanks to a front that's moving through overnight into Thursday morning. It is going to bring again mainly just wind here to the valley, not much if any shower activity. Friday, temperatures rebound some to 66 and then we're back in the low 70s. Comfortable temperatures for the weekend, not quite up to 78. It's going to take a little while to get that warm again, but at least we'll be back in the 70s for the weekend. So uh, high clouds this morning, expect uh, more to increase throughout the day from the west. Winds, uh, we are going to see breezy winds this afternoon, good 10 to 15 miles per hour with again some of those showers over the mountain areas to the north. Uh, all of us seeing stronger winds on Thursday, 15 to 25 miles per hour with the cold air moving in from the northwest. So here's the storm system just clipping our northern mountain areas this afternoon. As we get into tomorrow, this large trough ends up swinging down northwest flow into our area, bringing some scattered rain snow showers. Snow levels should be above about 4,500 feet and a dusting of snow is about all we're going to see with some lingering moisture into Friday over the mountain areas, even possibly Saturday. Going to see just a few rain snow showers uh, again over those northern mountain zones. For the most part, it's the wind that we're going to be tracking. Again, breezy winds today. Plan on uh, quite blustery winds tomorrow with slightly stronger winds southeast of Boise. It could be closer to 30 miles an hour for mountain home versus 15 to 25. Yep, I was going to say, if you're in the Western Magic <sighs> Valley, as, as usual, I feel. As per usual, it's kind ready. of the windy side, yep. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Nate. You CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. A few more headlights, but still the same story as last time. Looking really good out there, running smooth. A uh, nice little commute for your Wednesday. Hey, it's hump day. We made it, folks. When you do eventually have to get in the car, just turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Yeah, and already definitely seeing daylight out there at 540 yeah. this morning. Saw it in the live shot at 532. So we're getting to those uh, mornings where there's lots of sunlight, which I love. Getting excited. All yeah. right, question of the day now. Nate, your mic is on in there, so don't eat pizza. Oh, uh, <laughs> A study says the average American now spends 26 minutes a day doing this. Lost track of my time. Commuting. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, wow, that's yeah. actually really good. Average uh, commute is about 26 minutes. I was thinking like texting or like the endless scroll uh, on the phone. The like, online just, shopping. You're like, how many miles has my thumb scrolled through social media today? <laughs> right. It's one of those you could wrap it around the earth like two times. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, I don't even want to think about it. Yeah. Like cooking, if oh, it's every like day, guess, yeah. 26 minutes, if you, if you do it over f three meals. Oh, oh I, I was going to say, yeah. that's like one meal. Oh, or one yeah, meal. I make very meal. quick meals, guys. Oh, okay. Doing <laughs> but, dishes. But that's a great guess, though. Yeah, like the whole day. process. Uh, all right, Doug says looking for a parking spot. That's especially if worst. you go downtown, I yeah, feel like you Yeah, especially on like, the weekends. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, oh, good. Sherry stopped at traffic lights. Oh, my gosh. I hope it's too. not that bad <laughs> here yet. We're just but it's the average American. Yeah. So uh, there this are definitely is, people who probably spent a lot of time stopped. Oh, that's my nightmare, guys. All right. Preparing food. Yep. And... He's with you as well. Someone okay. It takes a little time. I love all these guesses. Uh, we're going to, we're either going to hit it or we're going to hit everything but mm -hmm. it because I think we have a lot of great <laughs> guesses so far. Yeah. yeah. Uh, keep going and share with us on Facebook or Twitter. We'll go over some more in about an hour and give you the answer right before seven o'clock this morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a fire threatens an iconic observatory in California. Why crews there say this is no ordinary wildfire. All right, welcome back 545 on your Wednesday local forecast. This one for Vail temperatures uh, in southeast Oregon looking at or just eastern Oregon 80 degrees uh, for our height today. Uh, should be a really nice day overall with these warm temperatures. We do have clouds increasing throughout the afternoon and some breezy winds tonight. Uh, mostly cloudy skies 46 tomorrow much cooler only 59 degrees plan on partly cloudy skies and stronger winds out there on Thursday. All right, thanks, Nate. A new study shows that pollution caused about 9 million premature deaths back in 2019. Now, this research from The Lancet shows that it's about one in six deaths worldwide. The study finds fewer people have died from poverty-related issues like household air pollution in recent years, but that that's been offset by an increase in air pollution and toxic chemicals. So this morning, firefighters in Los Angeles are still monitoring hillsides just below the Griffith Observatory. Now, a fire came dangerously close to the iconic structure yesterday, as well as nearby homes. Nicole Comstock has the latest. Smoke rises off the hills just below the iconic Griffith Observatory, which was evacuated Tuesday afternoon while crews stopped a six-acre brush fire in its tracks. We hit this very hard, very fast from the ground and air. 
Police also detained a person of interest very fast. We saw them place this man in handcuffs and seat him in the back of a squad car. This after painters working at this home on Nottingham Avenue reportedly saw a man with a backpack starting a fire in the brush and a real estate agent then called 911. It's good that they got him. Gary R. Kellyan says neighbors are wondering where and how this person of interest made his way into the neighborhood. It's not an easy place to get access to, so he might have walked down from the trails. And it's bringing up old memories for many neighbors. Back in 2007, a different brush fire that started in Griffith Park charred 800 acres and led to hundreds of homes being evacuated. Once again, because of firefighters' quick work, no homes were damaged. We're lucky. They, they did a great job. I, I thanked every single one of them as I was walking up the hill. We expect to be here overnight and throughout the next day because what we have now is a six acre burning debris pile. And with moderate winds working against them, firefighters need to make sure that spot fires in the smoldering hills don't flare up. Well, firefighters in New Mexico still fighting back the nation's largest wildfire. Take a look. This fire now nearly 300,000 acres, the biggest fire in the state's history. Now, the latest map shows fire lines near Taos County, far from where the actual fire is right now. Now, the incident commander says that that's because they're planning for the worst. We need to anticipate a bad outcome. We need to anticipate that fire growth will mimic some of the fire growth that was seen over the last several weeks. So we have to prepare for that, and that's why you see those far out lines. Well, as of today, things will continue to dry out and warm up further. That's going to complicate firefighting efforts. Yeah, it is warm down there this time of the year. Um, I just looked up, well, in L.A. where that fire mm. at the Griffith Observatory is burning. They were almost 90 degrees yesterday yeah. for the daytime high. Yeah, All right, I'm loving the 70s. Yeah. I'm not ready for 90s yet. Exactly, so keep Mother it right Nature, here. Hear me loud and clear. <laughs> give us some 70s <laughs> yeah. and give us some 80s. Yeah, but give us the no, 70s. Like, yeah, like give yeah, like the yeah. first part of June. I'd be <laughs> fine with that. Yeah, yeah, we've really been uh, enjoying some of the nice temperatures, kind of a dry stretch of weather versus the soggy start we had to May. So yeah. uh, we've, we needed the rain. We were grateful we got it, but uh, I'm enjoying what we saw outside too. yesterday. Today, mm -hmm. uh, similar conditions. This is a uh, look at some of the future wind speeds. Uh, winds were fairly, fairly light uh, yesterday, a little breezy at times. Today, we're expecting some breezy winds into the afternoon. Uh, and again, on Thursday, wanted to fast forward into Thursday to show you some of the stronger wind speeds. So uh, this is about uh, 7 o'clock this evening. I Again, I think from about 4 to 5 o'clock, we'll start to see those winds increase to 10 to 15 miles an hour. Slightly stronger for Mountain Home and for Southeast Oregon. Rome looking at about 20 mile per hour sustained winds. And then on Thursday, stronger winds out of the northwest are getting channeled through the Snake River Valley uh, or the Treasure Valley. Temperatures are wind speeds, not temperatures. Temperatures are dropping tomorrow, but wind speeds of 15 to 25 miles per hour, even closer to 30 mile per hour wind speeds for Mountain Home as the system continues to work its way through the area. So temperatures right now 50 degrees uh, in Boise 48 Mountain Home McCall 36 uh, hope yep the seven-day forecast 78 degrees today so still warm out there ahead of this front that's moving in tomorrow we drop to 57 tomorrow spotty shower may be possible as moisture moves in out of the north uh, most of the weather should be in the mountain areas tomorrow afternoon a little bit warmer on Friday, low 70s Saturday, 72 on Sunday, mix of sun and clouds, and then mid 70s Monday, Tuesday next week. So, yeah, this is the one little hiccup uh, for tomorrow as far as in the forecast. Otherwise, it looks pretty quiet for the Treasure Valley. 59 in the mountains today, some showers this afternoon and evening. Over to a wintry mix uh, into Thursday, if not a thunderstorm tomorrow afternoon. Chances of rain, we're going to keep those in the forecast. It's about a 20 to 30 percent chance on Friday, Saturday, so some spotty showers. And then a mix of sun and clouds into next week with temperatures slowly climbing back into the low 60s uh, through Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, so a nice, you know, little cool down for the mountains, a chance of some light snow, yeah. and then a nice little warm up. The weekend's yeah. looking pretty nice yeah. right now. Uh, mountain areas to the north have the best chance of a few spotty showers, but overall, a lot drier yeah. weather pattern than we've been seeing uh, early May. Yeah, keep that in mind if you're heading up to the mountains. Thank you, Nate. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's take a live look out there this morning. Yeah, still everything looking good. Wow, look at that light. As Denny said earlier, yeah, seeing a little bit more daylight this morning. Now, when you do eventually have to get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. We have all of your team traffic updates. That's on 670 AM or 93.1 FM. Still to come this morning, staying safe on the road starts with the car you drive. How your SUV stacks up to the competition.
This is CBS 2 News This Morning. 554 This Morning. New research is shedding light on just how safe some of America's favorite cars are. Naomi Reckham has the results from the latest round of SUV crash tests. One by one, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety smashed into 18 different mid-size SUVs, looking to see how well they protect passengers in a side crash test. And this year's test was tougher. The IIHS introduced a larger barrier that travels faster to simulate the larger vehicles common on the road. The growth of SUVs and pickup trucks in the United States has resulted in heavier vehicles being involved in these kinds of collisions. IIHS President David Harkey says half the midsize SUVs tested received a good rating. The rest came in at acceptable or marginal. The results are much better than recent testing on 20 different small SUVs. Only one received a good rating. Do you feel confident that car makers can and will make changes based on these results? We are confident in the auto industry and that they will respond to this new test. There's no doubt that they can do it. It's just a question of how long it takes them to employ some of the additional, perhaps structural measures, uh, restraint measures that will protect the occupants. The IIHS will soon perform side crash tests on other vehicles, including sedans, to see how they handle the impact. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. Well, now taking a look at our gas prices this morning, Idaho is now tied with the national average. Now both are now sitting at 4.57 a gallon, according to Gas Buddy. The cheapest place to fill up still Costco. It says the location on Cole Road in Boise has gas for about 4.39 a gallon. Meanwhile, in Meridian and Napa, you'll have to pay closer to 4.42. Oh, it makes you cringe. All right, well, maybe the extra money you're spending on gas has prompted you to turn to McDonald's for a cheaper meal. Guilty. Uh, one man in Wisconsin, though, has made that a habit of his by choice. And I'm not just talking about a little weekly habit here or an occasional stop by. Uh, Don Gorski has eaten a Big Mac pretty much every day for the past 50 years. He's literally only missed eight days. This week, Dan is celebrating his golden anniversary, as he calls it, at the Golden Arches. He says he plans to keep ordering Big Macs with a side of Coca-Cola every day until he dies. Love that. All right. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, searching for answers in the Buffalo supermarket shooting. The additional targets investigators say the suspect had his eye on before carrying out the attack. And new bills heading through Washington this week. We'll look at what lawmakers hope to accomplish with another round of federal spending. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, looking ahead after the 2022 primary, we have a full breakdown of election results straight ahead. Plus, emphasizing the importance of standing up to hate. A look at the vigil for the Buffalo supermarket shooting right here in Boise. And a local church showing support for Ukraine, how much money they raised for a local benefit concert and how those funds will help with relief efforts overseas. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to CBS 2 News. You're looking live outside in downtown Boise on this Wednesday morning, 6 o'clock on the dot. It is May 18th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Denny Hawkins. I'm Sarah Jacobson. Yeah, loving a look at that first light. And Denny, I know I mentioned this earlier at the last hour, but one thing we forgot yesterday was Idaho Day. I don't know how we didn't celebrate by eating our weight in potatoes. I know. Ooh. Come on. Every, every year. I it's did our actually tradition. have a baked potato on Monday night. So Good. we'll just say that I celebrated early. So, yeah, no, you, yeah. yeah a little, a little pre yeah. you know, holiday going and this on. Is Idaho Day. This we morning, Nate here. and I have just been living on yeah. the election night pizza from last night. You haven't had any yet. I am oh, yeah. proud of your willpower. It's after the show is when, is when oh, that's okay. happening. Yeah, so we've got yeah. boxes up in the fridge. So at least it's in the fridge. Uh, some nights, or some election nights, it's just left out. So we yeah. still eat it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you saw from first light some of the high clouds. Uh, but as you can imagine, with quiet weather across the downtown area, uh, we do have green lights this morning for your drive as you're heading in. Dry roads out there, 7 o'clock, 50 degrees, 54 at 8. It's just really nice out there this morning. Uh, not too cool. Temperatures pretty close to normal, uh, where we're in the upper 40s near 50 degrees. So westerly flow in place currently this morning, bringing in some of the high-in-the-sky clouds. Moisture is on the way. You can see showers in the Pacific Northwest along the coast. 
coast anyway. And we're going to see some of that rain make their, its way into the northern mountain areas at least. So we're getting just clipped by a storm system well to the north of us. It is bringing some light rain into the area by about midday into the afternoon and evening for those mountain areas to the north. We'll just see clouds increase as well as some breezy winds uh, across the valley throughout the late afternoon and evening as the storm front pushes through. Uh, in fact, colder air moving in Thursday as northwest flow takes over will bring some spotty rain snow showers to the northern mountain areas. Maybe a stray shower in the valley, but uh, much cooler temperatures into tomorrow. So your adventure cast today, yeah, as you're heading out and about, plan on about 59 degrees or so at 9 o'clock, 70 around lunchtime and a very warm, if not comfortable, 78 degrees with the cloudy skies that are filling in and winds about 10 to 15 miles an hour. Thank you, Nate. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, let's get a check up there this morning. A few more headlights, but uh, yeah, everything's still running smoothly on I-84, also on our secondary roads. So when you do eventually have to get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. All right, we start with results, of course, from last night's primary election. Yeah, here are the unofficial results from some of Idaho's key races. Now we begin with the Republican race for governor. Now the AP projects that incumbent Brad Little has won the GOP primary for Idaho's top job. Today's the day the voters get to have their say and I couldn't be happier with the results. Well, I wish Janice the best. Uh, she's still going to be lieutenant governor till January, so uh, I will continue to work with her and I wish her the best going forward. The governor says he's now turning his attention to the November election. His focus, he says, will be on improving roads, taxes and education. Well, there were three candidates in the race for lieutenant governor on the Republican ballot last night. The latest results with 86 percent of precincts reporting show Scott Bedke in the lead of this race over Priscilla Giddings uh, with 52 percent of the vote. Now, Bedke has most recently served as Speaker of the House. And let's take a look at the GOP race for Secretary of State between Phil McGrain, Dorothy Moon, and Mary Souza. Now, McGrain holds 43% of the vote, Moon at 41%, Mary Souza sitting at just over 15% of the vote. Now, Phil McGrain is managing to maintain that lead. CBS2 spoke to him overnight, and he says he hopes to use this position to lead the way for election security. And being able to show that Idaho really stands out across the country in terms of what we're doing to protect our elections. At the same time, there really is a lot we can do, especially with technology becoming a bigger part of all of this, to make sure it's both secure, but also it really serves the voters at the end of the day. Now moving on in the race for Attorney General on the Republican side, incumbent Lawrence Wasden was being challenged by Raul Labrador and Arthur McAmer. Now right now, unofficial results, again with 86% of precincts reporting, show Labrador in the lead with 51% of the vote over Wasden's 38%. Now a victory on Labrador's part will unseat Idaho's longest serving Attorney General. Now, one of the biggest races of the night, the GOP race for superintendent of public instruction. That was between Debbie Critchfield, Brandon Durst, and incumbent Sherry Ibarra. Now, this is Idaho has slipped to last for pupil per pupil funding for education. Now this year, Debbie Critchfield took home the most votes with 39%, over 40% now. Brandon Durst at 34% and Sherry Ibarra at 27%. Well, the AP projects Mike Crapo as the winner of the Republican nomination for U.S. Senate. There were several candidates running. Crapo, though, has 67 percent of the vote. Well, the AP also projected Mike Simpson has won the Republican nomination for U.S. House in the Idaho 2nd Congressional District with 55 percent of the vote. Now, Brian Smith took home second with 33 percent of that vote. Well, Idaho's Democratic primary had a number of uncontested races. We'll show you a few of the highlights, though. One of the big uh, contested races was for U.S. Senator between David Roth and Ben Persley. Uh, Roth came away with 58 percent of the vote, again, 86 percent of precincts reporting there. Meanwhile, in the governor's race, Stephen Height was up against a number of write-in candidates, including Sandpoint Mayor Shelby Rognestad. Unofficial results show Height won just over 80 percent of the vote. Meanwhile, Terry Pickens Manweiler won the nomination for lieutenant governor. Well, Ada County elections, it was the result of preparation through weeks at local elections offices across the Gem State. And the Ada County Clerk, Trent Triple, says he's proud of how things went. It's, it's really one of the largest events that takes place in Ada County. We had 1,200 volunteers, you know, 90,000 people participate. Uh, that's, a, that's a big thing for Ada County. Uh, and we're proud of that. We're proud that we were able to pull it off uh, in a way that people hopefully uh, builds trust in, in how we held out the election. 
Dribble says that things went smoother this year and he's crediting redistricting efforts. Now, previously, election officers, they had to count up to 25 hundreds of the people's vote per precinct. Now, with these new boundaries, that number is down to about 1,500. It also means shorter lines and smoother processes for voters. Now, Triple says he hopes things go just as smoothly come November. And of course, stay with us for continuing coverage of these unofficial election results. We'll have numbers as they continue to update this morning on our website, IdahoNews.com. You can also download the CBS2 mobile app to have these alerts sent straight to your smartphone. Well, happening today, Boise Mayor Lauren McLean will give her State of the City address. Now, the speech will be live streamed or you can watch it at the community fair. That's going to be at Jump Plaza. The fair runs from 3 to 6 o'clock. The mayor's speech will be shown on the Jumbotron. Developing news this morning, funerals for victims of a mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, could begin as soon as this weekend. Ten people were killed Saturday when an 18-year-old gunman opened fire in a grocery store. Investigators say the attack was a racially motivated hate crime, President Biden also calling it an act of domestic terrorism. He and the First Lady visited the crime scene yesterday to pay their respects and to offer comfort to the victims' families. The day is going to come, it will come, when your loved one brings a smile as you remember him or her. Meanwhile, investigators are still combing through the scene for evidence. They're also looking into the suspect's online activity. They say he made posts indicating that he started planning this attack several months ago. CBS News has also learned that some of those posts included other uh, mentions of other possible targets, such as elementary schools, churches, and Hasidic Jewish communities. The suspect will be back in court for a felony hearing tomorrow. Well, people gathered at the Anne Frank Memorial yesterday to condemn the recent shooting in Buffalo, New York. Now, their speakers, they emphasize the importance of standing up to hate. We, as a collective community, have to push away from the language that divides us, the language that, that allows us to see somebody as another, and slowly allows us or allows someone to see a member of the community as less than them, less than human. You can find a full photo gallery on our website. Just head to IdahoNews.com. Well, Cathedral of the Rockies is giving a big check to members of the Slavic community. The more than $12,000 was raised during the community concert for Ukrainian relief back in April. Now, Nick Anderson, who's a member of the choir at Cathedral of the Rockies, was the one who presented that check. Now, in a matter of weeks, he was able to gather eight choirs, four instrumental groups, and two contemporary groups to put on the April 29th show. Now, the money will now go towards medical supply and food for those in eastern Ukraine. I hope that uh, in addition to just the music uh, touching people that uh, they find that this is a way that they can help in a tangible way. And they're doing it again. Cathedral of the Rockies organizing another Ukrainian relief concert. That one coming up in September. Yeah, just I mean, wonderful to see continued efforts coming from our community to, to help out. Uh, it can seem so far away. It can seem yeah. so challenging to feel like you can make a difference. But I mean, okay. like we've seen time and time again, and we've gotten to talk with some people who have, uh, you know, who have gone over and who have helped with those distribution efforts of supplies and relief efforts. So uh, it's been pretty incredible to see. So you yeah. can still make a difference. No, it's amazing to see what our community can do. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're doing it again. That's awesome. We'll have, yeah, yeah hopefully more information coming yeah. forward soon. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. September feels like a long ways away, yeah. though. Yeah, <laughs> we still have all of summer to get through before that. Uh, so excited. Forward to that. Looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. we've had a nice taste of uh, finally some nice typical seasonal yeah, temperatures the last couple of days. Uh, yeah, we're getting mild again today ahead of some changes. Hey, quick shot uh, over Sun Valley. Beautiful Ooh. start today. Uh, oh, wow. It's actually changed Love since I last mountains. saw it. Yeah, in fact, it uh, looks like it's backtracked a little bit. We're seeing a little more light out there. Sunrise is happening in less than 10 minutes. Uh, we're looking at uh, some high clouds, otherwise lots of clear conditions, uh, at least to kick off the day today. We're going to see clouds increase throughout the afternoon and evening. Temperature-wise, we mentioned it being, yeah, really nice out there. 78 degrees today. Of course, this is the, uh, the peak. We're sliding. Uh, in fact, we're plummeting tomorrow to 57 degrees. So we've got a cold front, as you can imagine. It's going to be sweeping through uh, tonight into Thursday. Temperatures uh, are going to be below average and about 20 degrees cooler than today. 66 on Friday. Low, low 70s are typically our high for this time of year. So we'll be back to average this weekend, but it'll take a couple of days to rebound after the quick drop into tomorrow. So this is our next weather maker. Again, we do have a, a little bit of moisture moving in from the west today. It, we're turning cloudy and breezy today. Blustery winds in store on Thursday. 
with some mountain showers in store today and again tomorrow. Rain snow showers with cooler temperatures arriving on Thursday as well. So here's our next storm system. Futurecast putting it into motion again. The moisture slides in this afternoon to the northern mountain areas, southern part of the uh, region, southern highlands. Hawaii's are looking dry today. Uh, maybe a few spotty showers into Thursday across all mountain areas. Might even see a shower trickle into the valley as that northerly flow will be in place. And that's what's going to keep temperatures on the chilly side. Wind speeds again generally 10 to 15 miles an hour today. Stronger winds southeast uh, in southeast Oregon and then all of us are going to see elevated winds tomorrow. In fact, closer to 15 to 25 mile per hour winds. Notice it's quite blustery at this uh, time at four o'clock tomorrow afternoon, I should say, and we're going to keep the winds around at least into the evening before it's, it dies off on Thursday. Yeah, you had mentioned earlier a little bit about kite surfing. Yeah, kite surfing day. It yep. could be uh, pretty cool if you don't <laughs> mind the cold temperatures coming back in tomorrow, but I saw some of that over the weekend yeah. with some of the blustery winds and well, it, it takes a lot of talent, it looks like. I, I don't know if I could do it. I'll oh, yeah. try it, though. A lot of strength, but definitely I would be wanting um, a wetsuit at yes, least for this time of the year. On, yeah, a lot of them had uh, some, something to keep you warm. I guess if you have that, it's all fair game. Yeah, not quite time to be jumping <laughs> in those lakes. All right, yeah. thank you, Nate. CBS2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring in team traffic all morning long. Yeah, everything looking good out there. A little bit more volumes on the road should get... Again, a little heavier towards the 7 o'clock hour, but nothing really to note right now. Everything running smoothly, so when you do have to get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, the future of interest rates in the U.S. Why the Fed is planning more hikes despite fears of a recession. Plus, new bills heading through Washington this week. What lawmakers are hoping to accomplish with another round of federal spending. All right, question of the day. We're going to look back at yesterday's question first. Surprisingly, this American item was created by a Canadian. Literally, it has the word American in it. Guys, we had no idea, but yeah, American cheese. I love that kind of cheese sometimes on burgers. Maybe I'll just start calling it Canadian cheese. I know. Why, why, why <laughs> the name? I'm curious. Now, is Swiss cheese actually Swiss? I have yeah, so many questions. All right, Opens now. the <laughs> gate. Open the floodgates. Yes, it is. All right, now for today's question. A study says the average American now spends 26 minutes a day doing this. All right, folks, what is it? All right, 616 on your Wednesday. Welcome back. Local forecast system for Nampa. Temperatures about 79 degrees. Uh, planning on clouds increasing throughout the afternoon and evening. It'll be a little breezy, but yeah, very mild, if not warm today. Overnight will be 49. We have a cold front sweeping through. Look at the temperature drop. In fact, just 56 in Nampa on Thursday. Do have a chance of a, foddy, a spotty shower, excuse me, and some blustery winds tomorrow as well. All right, thanks, Nate. Stocks are down in pre-market trading again this morning. Despite volatility on Wall Street, though, the Federal Reserve is planning more interest rate hikes. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said at a recent event that short-term interest rates will continue to climb until there is clear and convincing evidence that inflation is coming down in the U.S. Now, raising rates, in theory, helps curb inflation by slowing consumer spending, but there are concerns it may also lead to a recession. Well, you're looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning where federal lawmakers are on a spending spree for legislation. Now, Amy Kiley has a look at the three bills that they're now considering. Three high-profile spending bills are moving through Congress this week. They'd provide funding to help Ukraine, to address the baby formula shortage, and to support small businesses still recovering from the pandemic. The Senate is expected to pass a Ukraine aid package Thursday. Strong bipartisan support for this funding in the House and in the Senate but also insurance that we have effective oversight of our assistance to Ukraine. That bipartisan support might be harder to find for two other funding bills Congress is considering. Now these same big spenders are proposing another $50 billion next week to bail out restaurants. Restaurants that have been primarily injured by overzealous Democrat governors and their edicts. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is fast-tracking a bill to help restaurants, bars, and other businesses still struggling due to the pandemic. It's unlikely to get the 60 votes needed to pass. Some Republicans support it, but Democratic Senator Joe Manchin says he probably won't. Over in the House... Mothers across the country are looking to us for help. And we will not force them to face this crisis on their own. Democrats want $28 million to try to ease the baby formula shortage. Most of it would pay for more FDA workers to inspect production facilities. Republican Senator John Cornyn has said he thinks focusing on the supply chain could be more effective. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. I told you about that. 
Yeah, I was going to say, it is a concern. Mm -hmm. I know that we talked about yesterday about, you know, the moms community, mm -hmm. moms across the gem state, helping each other out, which is really cool to yeah. be able to see that. Love so to see it. I know it's a hard situation. So. Yeah, well, it has not been hard. Thankfully, has been being outside this week, yeah, finding no, ways to get all. outside. Nate said, I don't know if you heard him say this earlier, uh, his kids, or he brought the uh, inflatable, like, water slide water out for slide his kids. Out oh. yesterday, yeah. So we're coming to Apparently Nate's house. Is what so I'm everyone is invited yeah. to yep. Nate's today. I thought it was cold. Uh, well, 70s are nice, especially if there's no wind, right? But I do. Uh, <laughs> we use uh, the water's frigid cold, but kids didn't even care. They don't care. No, they, they don't, don't care. care. No, it no. doesn't matter. So yeah, it was good enough for them uh, to get outside. Probably get it out again. It's, you have to get it out for like two days. Otherwise, it's not worth it. It's too yeah. much work. Too much so. work. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, folks. So, yeah, another day outside. We have more cloud cover moving in uh, throughout the day today. Here's a look from uh, May Marina. The, the yeah over McCall Payette Lake. Beautiful start today. We do have some of the high clouds already in place over some of the northern mountain areas. Temperatures are a bit chilly. Yeah, just 38 degrees right now in McCall. So jackets, coats this morning. You'll be able to shut them off uh, throughout the afternoon as far as temperatures go, but we actually have some rain moving into the Long Valley throughout the uh, afternoon and evening. 47 in Boise, also Ontario. Good morning to you. 45 in Mountain Home. Now for the forecast, again, upper 70s today. Winds are going to increase some throughout the afternoon and evening. A little bit breezy, 10 to 15 miles per hour as far as our wind speeds today. Stronger winds on Thursday due to the storm system that's pushing through. It's a dry system for the Treasure Valley. Mountains to the north have the best chance of seeing some rain, a few hundredths of an inch today. Rain, snow showers tomorrow, but 57 here in the valley. Maybe a shower trickling in from the north into parts of the valley, but very spotty in nature, if at all. And then winds 15 to 25 miles per hour. 66 Friday, mostly sunny, mostly sunny Saturday, 71. Should be in the low to mid 70s into next week with a mix of clouds and sunshine. Near average temperatures are normal highs 73 this time of year. Normal high in the mountains, 62. So we're a little bit cooler than normal with some of the rain this afternoon and evening. Again, it's not going to be a wash out of a day, but some spotty showers. Rain, snow showers tomorrow, 46. Snow levels uh, should be above about 4,500 feet. So notice we're cold enough, 34 for an overnight low to see a few snowflakes up in the mountain areas. Rain chances continuing, some spotty showers Friday and Saturday in some of the mountain areas, about 60 degrees by Sunday. Again, average highs on Monday next week, partly cloudy. Should be near the same temperatures on Tuesday as well. Again, another mix of sun and clouds. Roland should be tracking any of the uh, changes to the forecast. He'll have updates at 4 o'clock today. Yeah, looking forward to that weekend too. Not bad. Oh, it's going to be great, yeah. Sorry, that's, that's probably the best thing I'm looking forward to. Just <laughs> yeah, warm Wednesday, weather. You can talk about the weekend. It's, Sunny it's skies. officially it's on the horizon. Well, it so. almost feels like a bad thing until, you know, we eventually hit hump day. So, yeah. guys, yeah, we officially okay. made it. We Look talk about the weekend on Monday, though, every day or every, every week. So <laughs> yes, it doesn't matter what, what day of the week it is. Yeah, no, but get outside and enjoy our weather if you can today. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Look outside this morning. Yeah. Everything is looking good. You uh, want, definitely want to grab your sunglasses if you are heading out this morning. That's, of course, because some of some of those sun, sunspots for your commute. But yeah, everything looking good. Uh, volumes are up just slightly. Going to get a little bit bigger as we head into the 7 o'clock hour. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn in, tune in to KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, kids ages 5 to 11 could be eligible for a COVID booster soon. What has to happen before the shots approved and why experts say the decision could come just in time? Yeah, plus vaccination rates aren't making much progress. Why Americans are still hesitant to get the vaccine this far along into the pandemic. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 624 on your Wednesday. Welcome back. The FDA has authorized coronavirus booster shots for kids 5 to 11 years old. Now it's the first time the agency has approved an extra dose for that age group and health experts say that the move, it comes just in time. Now, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, COVID cases, they dropped to their lowest point in early April, but have since jumped 260%. Now the final decision will be made by the CDC. Its vaccine advisory committee will meet tomorrow to discuss the issue. Meanwhile, a new survey shows the U.S. has made very little progress in getting people who are against COVID vaccines to change their minds. Medical reporter Liz Bonas breaks down the findings. 
Hey there, everybody. About one in six of us say we are definitely not going to get the COVID-19 vaccine, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, a number that has not changed in more than a year. That's a problem if you look at the latest CDC numbers. About 66% of us are fully vaccinated. But the death rates continue to climb, mainly in people who are not vaccinated. The problem is even greater in children. The FDA just authorized boosters for children 5 to 11, but Ohio's Cincinnati Children's Hospital Infectious Disease Specialists say most haven't gotten the first series of shots. Maybe 30 percent um, have been vaccinated, which means 70 percent have not been vaccinated. The Kaiser survey data shows the size of the group that says they are not getting vaccinated has not changed in the last year. Many who say no say they don't trust the mainstream media and they choose their own sources of what is true. I think part of it, too, is that people just emotionally are done with COVID. They just don't want to hear about it anymore. They don't want to think about it anymore. But, well, we're not thinking about it. Dr. Robert Frank says the virus is still mutating or changing. The concern is that it could make a variant that's even worse than the Omicron. If that happens, Dr. Frank says, it will also be worse for those not vaccinated, whether we are tired of it or not. Your own health care provider, of course, the best person to use as a resource about the vaccine. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Coming up on CBS 2 News, searching for answers in the Buffalo supermarket shooting. The additional targets investigators say the suspect had his eye on before carrying out this attack. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. After all your favorites, join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And our question of the day. A study says the average American now spends 26 minutes a day doing this. What is it? We'll go over some guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, looking ahead after the 2022 primary, we have a full breakdown of election results straight ahead. Plus, emphasizing the importance of standing up to hate. A look at the vigil for the Buffalo supermarket shooting right here in Boise. And a local church so showing support for Ukraine, how much money they raised from a local benefit concert and how those funds will help with relief efforts overseas. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. All right, folks, happy Wednesday. Getting you going uh, on your Wednesday morning, kicking off with those frosted weather weeds. Yeah, temperatures, uh, we're pretty close to average this time of morning in the mid to upper 40s across a lot of the valley. We'll be in the low 50s uh, as you head out as the sun's uh, coming up now and 54 degrees about 8 o'clock. We do have some high clouds that are going to be streaming in throughout the morning and afternoon. In fact, you can see them right at our doorstep as moisture is moving into the Pacific Northwest. So westerly flow in place today. Mountain areas to the north are going to get skimmed or just clipped by some of this moisture that's moving in from the west as well as the core of the storm system is going to stay to the north of us. As you can see, some of the showers moving in to some of the west central mountains, Baker County, maybe even moving into some of the Boise mountains throughout some of the late afternoon and early evening hours. Light rain is expected. Clouds here in the valley, some breezy winds, and we're going to see a temperature drop as moisture moves in and cooler air into Thursday. So some lingering moisture into tomorrow as well. Daily uh, 9 to 5 forecast, yep, getting out at about 59 at 9 o'clock. Comfortable around lunch times 70 still lighter winds and then winds are increasing throughout some of the afternoon as you drive home some breezy winds about 78 degrees today. Thank you Nate CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything looking nice out there. Volume is a little bit higher going to continue to ramp up through at least the eight o'clock hour. So keep that in mind. Also grab your sunglasses. We are going to once again have sunspots this morning or sun glare depending on which way you're driving. So when you do eventually get in the car, turn on 670 KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, we start with results, of course, from last night's primary election here in the Gem State. Yeah, let's jump in with our unofficial results from some of Idaho's key races. Now we begin with the Republican race for governor. Now the AP projects that incumbent Brad Little has won the GOP primary for Idaho's top job. Today's the day the voters get to have their say and I couldn't be happier with the results. Well, I wish Janice the best. Uh, she's still going to be lieutenant governor till January, so uh, I will continue to work with her, and I wish her the best going forward. The governor says he's now turning his attention towards the November election, focusing on improving roads, tax relief, and education. Well, there were three candidates in the race for lieutenant governor on the Republican side. Latest results with 86% of the precinct reporting show Scott Bedke in the lead with 52% of the vote compared to Priscilla Giddings at 42%. Now, Bedke most recently has served as Speaker of the House. 
And let's take a look at the GOP race for Secretary of State. That's between Phil McGrain, Dorothy Moon, and Mary Souza. Now, the race hasn't been called yet, but Phil McGrain has the lead with 43% of the vote, Dorothy Moon trailing at 41, Mary Souza sitting at 15%. And being able to show that Idaho really stands out across the country in terms of what we're doing to protect our elections. At the same time, there really is a lot we can do, especially with technology becoming a bigger part of all of this, to make sure it's both secure, but also it really serves the voters at the end of the day. Now in the Republican race for Attorney General, incumbent Lawrence Wasden was being challenged by Raul Labrador and Arthur McAmer. Now right now, unofficial results show Labrador with the lead with 51% of the vote. A victory here will unseat Idaho's longest serving Attorney General. Now, one of the biggest races of the night, the GOP race for superintendent of public instruction. That was between Debbie Critchfield, Brandon Durst, and incumbent Sherry Ibarra. Now, Debbie Critchfield came out on top with 40% of the vote, Brandon Durst at 34%, and incumbent Sherry Ibarra at just 27%. And the AP reports Mike Crapo is the winner of the Republican nomination for U.S. Senate. There were several candidates running. Crapo, though, has 67% of the vote right now. And the AP also projecting that Mike Simpson has won the Republican nomination for U.S. House in Idaho's 2nd Congressional District with 55% of the vote. Brian Smith trails at 33. Well, Idaho's Democratic primary had a lot of uncontested races, but we'll show you a, a few of the highlights here. The contested race was for U.S. Senator uh, between David Roth and Ben Persley. I can see Roth coming away in the lead with 58% of the votes. Again, 86% of precincts reporting at this hour this morning. In the governor's race on the Democratic side, Stephen Height was up against a number of ride-in candidates, including Sandpoint Mayor Shelby Rognestad. Unofficial results show that Height won with just over 80% of the vote. Meanwhile, Terry Pickens man Weiler won nomination for lieutenant governor. Well, yesterday's election was the result of weeks of preparation at our local elections offices across the gem state. Now, 80 County Clerk Trent Triple says he's proud of how things went. It's it's really one of the largest events that takes place in Ada County. We had 1,200 volunteers, you know, 90,000 people participate. Uh, that's a that's a big thing for Ada County, uh, and we're proud of that. We're proud that we were able to pull it off uh, in a way that people hopefully uh, builds trust in in how we held out the election. Triple says things went smoother this year in crediting redistricting efforts. Now, previously, election officers, they had to count up to 2,500 of the people's votes per precinct. Now, with these new boundaries, that number is now down to 1,500. It also means shorter lines and a smoother process for voters. Triple says he hopes that things will go just as smooth come November. And of course, stay with us for continuing coverage of these unofficial election results. Of course, we'll have updated numbers for you this morning as they come in on our website, IdahoNews.com, here on air. Uh, and you can also, of course, download the CBS2 mobile app to have those alerts sent straight to your smartphone. Well, happening today, Boise Mayor McLean will give her State of the City address. Now, the speech, it will be live streamed or you can watch it at the community fair at Jump Plaza. The fair is from 3 to 6 today and the mayor's speech, it'll be shown on the Jumbotron. Developing news now this morning, funerals for victims of a mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, could start as soon as this weekend. Ten people were killed when an 18-year-old gunman opened fire in a grocery store on Saturday. Investigators say the attack was a racially motivated hate crime. President Biden also calling it an act of domestic terrorism. He and the First Lady visited the crime scene yesterday to pay their respects and offer comfort to the victim's families. Meanwhile, investigators are still combing through the scene for evidence, looking into the suspect's online activity as well. They say he not only made posts indicating that he planned this attack several months ago, CBS News, though, has also learned that some of those posts included mentions of other possible targets, such as elementary schools, churches, and Hasidic Jewish communities. The suspect will be back in court for a felony hearing tomorrow. Well, people gathered at the Anne Frank Memorial yesterday to condemn, condemn the recent shooting in Buffalo, New York. Now there, speakers emphasize the importance of standing up to hate. This could have happened here. It could happen here. If we are not clearer and more strident in our own use of words, in our own calling out the hate that exists, that's Boise Mayor McLean. Now you can find a photo gallery of the event on our website. Just head to IdahoNews.com. 
Well, Cathedral of the Rockies is giving a big check to members of the Slavic community. More than $12,000 was raised during the community concert for Ukrainian relief back in April. Now, Nick Anderson, a member of the choir at Cathedral of the Rockies, presented the check. In a matter of weeks, he was able to gather eight choirs, four instrumental groups, and two contemporary groups to put on the April 29th show. Now, the money will now go toward medical supplies and food for those in eastern Ukraine. Now, Cathedral of the Rockies is organizing even another Ukrainian relief concert. That one is set for September. Yes. Gosh, September, yeah, it's going to be great to see another event like that on the calendar. There's a lot that will be on the calendar come September. Yeah. We have a lot to get through yes. before then. <laughs> a lot of nice weather, hopefully through the spring, but then I'm like preparing for the sweltering heat come yes. summer. I'm enjoying the 70s right now, but I know mm -hmm. once we get to those 90s, even 100s, I will definitely be changing my tune. Then we'll be crying for <laughs> September. We'll be like, please, Sarah's going to run faster. out. To, don't you like to paddleboard? You're going to run yes. out every morning right after shows to uh, to do a little paddleboard. Yeah, yeah that's cool. a good plan. Put it in the back uh, of my car. Ooh, Let's go. Nice. All right, well, today, yeah, we're not quite to summertime temperatures. Maybe early summer, upper 70s, maybe an 80 in Ontario. Uh, we've had temperatures in the 80s now this season, uh, just this week. But uh, we are warm again today ahead of the storm system that's going to be pushing through uh, tonight into tomorrow. So that's going to drop these temperatures. So about 80 in Mountain Home, 78 in Nampa today, 56 up in McCall. We have some moisture moving through the northern mountain areas, so not quite as mild up north as we have been uh, with some of the weather moving in. So this is our uh, next weather maker. We've got got a seri an area of low pressure uh, moving into the Pacific Northwest. It's going to bring, uh, again, some spotty showers to those northern zones. Notice it skips over the Treasure Valley and the southern mountain areas, so it just hugs those northern fringes of southwest Idaho, eastern Oregon. Uh, but the storm system continues to impact us into tomorrow. Uh, the counterclockwise rotation of the large trough is going to bring some rain snow showers into the area tomorrow afternoon, maybe a thunderstorm, and continue to keep a little bit of moisture moving into the mountain areas to the north into Friday. So we're keeping just a small chance of a scattered shower on Friday, mainly in the mountains with some clouds in the Treasure Valley. And of course, the wind is going to be an issue. So breezy winds this afternoon, 10 to 15 miles an hour. Fast forwarding into Thursday near a wind advisory criteria or thresholds as we get into the 15 to 25 mile per hour wind speed range in the afternoon. In fact, closer to 30 mile per hour winds possible for areas southeast of Boise and over the southern highland area. So quite gusty tomorrow. Could see gusts up to about 40 miles an hour. How much moisture are we going to expect to see out of these systems that are moving through? Eh, not a lot. In fact, very limited moisture content is expected uh, in the mountain areas. Eh, models even showing now maybe a hundredth of an inch with a spotty shower in some of the Treasure Valley. Again, for the most part, weather is going to stay in the mountain areas with 78 today. 57 is all we'll see tomorrow in the, in the uh, Treasure Valley with your adventure cast. And then on, uh, I forgot to change, Thursday. No, it's Friday, 66 degrees. Nope, all good. Um, I want to note too that with all that sunshine you're talking about, grab your sunglasses before yeah, heading out this glare. morning. Yeah. Yep, it is bright out there this morning. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening out there on the roadways. Thank you, Nate. <laughs> CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah. Volumes up and they are going to continue through at least the eight o'clock hour, uh, but everything is looking nice out there. Just grab your sunglasses before heading out. When you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. All right, question of the day. Today's question, oh, study says the average American now spends 26 minutes a day doing this. I have a feeling it's not something positive. Okay. I mean, it could be, but I just feel like kind of it like leads you to think like we should be spending less time doing this. Maybe. Exactly, what, yeah. What I said I say commuting spend? initially That's a really like good on, one. The, on the drive, or maybe it's, is it online shopping at work? That could be a good one. Um, um, mine's a little higher up on little that higher than, yeah. <laughs> Kidding, guys, kidding. <laughs> I know, we have our moments. Um, I was thinking like texting or like the mindless scrolling. Ah, yeah. Doug, has Doug has a good guess. Douglas says yep. daydreaming. Daydreaming? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah, we do that. Yeah. See, I'm thinking something more along the lines of cooking, cleaning, you know, Ooh, those things that okay. you do daily. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that you like want to take less time, but they just take more time. Uh, Carissa says hitting this. the snooze button. Oh my gosh. This morning, I, I think I minutes. hit it. I probably like got three to times. hit it. I hit it like what? Did you hit three times? This morning, yeah. Wow. See, well, because I kept waking myself up every hour and I kept like You're looking nervous at. nervous about election results. Well, I just like all of a sudden was like waiting for push alerts and I was like, oh my gosh, this is how attached I've gotten to being able to have this information so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, so true. Can't Lisa see. says oh. standing in line. Ooh, oh. Each day, I hope not. <sighs> oh goodness. That's. The That's worst. a lot of time. All right, well, Nate left the building, so I, I think that means we have <laughs> to wrap done. up now. Uh, so if you think you know the answer, share with us on Facebook or Twitter. We'll go over the correct answer for you here less than 15 minutes from now, right before 7 o'clock this morning.
And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a fire threatening an iconic observatory in California. Why crews there say this is no ordinary wildfire. All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, forecast for Wednesday in Vail, Oregon. Temperatures about 80 degrees today. Should be very warm, uh, even with the clouds coming in from the west throughout the afternoon. So cloudy skies uh, later today, breezy winds. Tonight we dropped 46. There's a dry front moving through. It'll keep us at just 59 degrees in Vail on Thursday. Plan on uh, partly cloudy skies tomorrow and blustery winds about 15 to 25 miles per hour. Thanks, Nate. A new study says pollution caused about 9 million premature deaths back in 2019. Research from The Lancet shows that it's about one in six deaths worldwide. The study finds fewer people have died from poverty related issues like household air pollution in recent years, but that that's been offset by an increase in air pollution and toxic chemicals. Well, this morning, firefighters in Los Angeles are still monitoring hillsides just below the Griffith Observatory. A fire came dangerously close to the iconic structure and homes nearby yesterday. Nicole Comstock has the latest. Smoke rises off the hills just below the iconic Griffith Observatory, which was evacuated Tuesday afternoon while crews stopped a six acre brush fire in its tracks. We hit this very hard, very fast from the ground and air. Police also detained a person of interest very fast. We saw them place this man in handcuffs and seat him in the back of a squad car. This after painters working at this home on Nottingham Avenue reportedly saw a man with a backpack starting a fire in the brush and a real estate agent then called 911. It's good that they got him. Gary R. Kellyan says neighbors are wondering where and how this person of interest made his way into the neighborhood. It's not an easy place to get access to, so you might have walk down from the trails and it's bringing up old memories for many neighbors back in 2007 a different brush fire that started in Griffith Park charred 800 acres and led to hundreds of homes being evacuated once again because of firefighters quick work no homes were damaged we're lucky they, they did a great job I, I thanked every single one of them as I was walking up the hill we expect to be here overnight and throughout the next day because what we have now is a six acre burning debris pile. And with moderate winds working against them, firefighters need to make sure that spot fires in the smoldering hills don't flare up. Well, firefighters in New Mexico are still fighting back the nation's largest wildfire. That fire now sitting at nearly 300,000 miles acres, pardon me, the biggest fire in state history right now. Now, the latest map shows fire lines near Taos County, far from where the actual fire is right now. Now, the incident commander says that's because they're planning for the worst. We need to anticipate a bad outcome. We need to anticipate that fire growth will mimic some of the fire growth that was seen over the last several weeks. So we have to prepare for that, and that's why you see those far out lines. Today will continue to dry out and warm up, further complicating fire efforts. Yeah, you know what they need to see. I have a feeling we might be talking about that one for a while. So I, I think our hopefully recent rainfall uh, and uh, cooler temperatures have obviously helped postpone or you know yeah. postpone any early early season fire danger but we yes. know it can start at any time and uh, sometimes more rain just gives more fuel to the stuff that is out there so i, I say things are really greening up across the foothills <gasps> yeah. and it looks nice now but yeah it will eventually dry out and maybe be some uh, fuel for brush fires and things. Yeah. So we got to keep that in mind, unfortunately. Yeah, we're going to enjoy it while it's green, though, yes. for now. Look at all the bright sides of uh, the. Uh, I almost angles. said the circle of life, and then it just makes me want to sing like the. <laughs> I got you. The, yeah. the Lion King. Denny's got Not a voice do it. No. Her, uh, okay, we'll have to have her give her uh, a chance to solo <laughs> no. it later. Hard pass. Uh, all right, hard pass. <laughs> Hey, look outside, boy, it's gorgeous uh, this morning. Uh, mostly clear skies across the valley. We do have some high clouds, uh, especially over the northern mountain areas, but beautiful from Bogus to Sun Valley. Uh, Stanley looking gorgeous as well. McCall, of course, we love the shot over Tamarack, uh, looking over the Long Valley. Extended forecast for the Treasure Valley. Normal high is 73 degrees. We're above normal today by about 5 degrees or so. Should be in the upper 70s. Some areas hitting 80 degrees in the lower and uppermost valleys. We do have some clouds increasing, though, from the west. Breezy winds this afternoon. There's a dry front that's sweeping through the valley into Thursday. Now this front will drop temperatures significantly. In fact, a good 20 degrees cooler tomorrow. Winds are going to really pick up out of the north
northwest tomorrow afternoon uh, and we'll see partly cloudy skies, maybe a spotty shower. For the most part, it's going to be the temperature change in the winds that we're dealing with tomorrow. Friday, mostly sunny, 66, uh, so still cooler than normal. In fact, a slow rebound over the weekend into the low 70s, some mid 70s, Monday, Tuesday next week with a mix of sun and clouds uh, into next week as well. Dry weather is expected to continue in the valley. Mountains to the north have a chance of some moisture. However, so 59 today, 62 is normal. Showers after lunchtime into the afternoon be very spotty, light precipitation. Rain, snow showers uh, into Thursday, maybe an afternoon thunderstorm as well. We're going to keep a slight chance of rain in the forecast Friday and Saturday. Temperatures slowly rebounding into the mid 50s on Saturday and then low 60s into next week with a mix of clouds and sunshine. Might see a little bit of weather late Tuesday into Wednesday next week. Oh, and I keep this graphic. Roland's actually not here today, but Ariana will have the latest updates at four o'clock. Filling in for Roland today, tomorrow and Friday. I know. Nice to see that face. Thank you. Yeah, he likes to be on air. So yeah, he does. <laughs> like we <laughs> love Roland. We like to see him. Like to see him. <laughs> all right, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. It is very sunny out there, friends. Yeah, don't forget those sunglasses before heading out the door, but still main roads and secondary roads running smoothly on this Wednesday. If you have a couple extra minutes, join us for your latest news headlines and weather. And when you do eventually get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. All right, coming up on CBS 2 News, staying safe on the road starts with what you drive, how some of the most common SUVs out there stack up to the competition. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 653 on your Wednesday. New research is shedding light on just how safe some of America's favorite cars are. Naomi Ruckham has the results from the latest round of SUV crash tests. One by one, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety smashed into 18 different midsize SUVs, looking to see how well they protect passengers in a side crash test. And this year's test was tougher. The IIHS introduced a larger barrier that travels faster to simulate the larger vehicles common on the road. The growth of SUVs and pickup trucks in the United States has resulted in heavier vehicles being involved in these kinds of collisions. IIHS President David Harkey says half the midsize SUVs tested received a good rating. The rest came in at acceptable or marginal. The results are much better than recent testing on 20 different small SUVs. Only one received a good rating. Do you feel confident that car makers can and will make changes based on these results? We are confident in the auto industry and that they will respond to this new test. There's no doubt that they can do it. It's just a question of how long it takes them to employ some of the additional, perhaps structural measures, uh, restraint measures that will protect the occupants. The IIHS will soon perform side crash tests on other vehicles, including sedans, to see how they handle the impact. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. Now taking a quick look at our gas prices this morning, Idaho now tied with the national average. Now both are sitting at nearly 4.57 a gallon. Yeah, it hurts my wallet just to say. Now according to the Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up, that's going to be Costco. It says the location on Cole Road in Boise has gas for 4.39 a gallon. Meanwhile, if you're out in Meridian or Napa, you'll have to pay a little closer to 4.42 a gallon. All right, maybe the extra money that you've been spending on gas has prompted you to turn to McDonald's for a cheap meal. Uh, one man in Wisconsin, though, has made it a habit by choice. And I'm not just talking about like a weekly habit here every other week. Uh, Don Gorski has eaten a Big Mac literally almost every single day for the past 50 years. Well, I've only missed eight days in 50 years, which is phenomenal. Here, a lot of people said, well, aren't you going to, you'll be dead before you, you know, reach 50 years of eating Big Macs. So I guess I proved them wrong. Yeah. Okay, so this week Dan celebrating his golden anniversary at the Golden Arches says he plans to keep ordering Big Macs with a side of Coca-Cola every day until he dies. Sarah just called him the official hamburglar. Yep, the hamburglar. Really the true one. We the found him. You know, we're all creatures of habit, I yeah. would say, and uh, I think I'd want something different for yeah. lunch. That's I don't fair. Know. But yeah, That's okay. Fair. Yeah, at least I know. I feel like I could get good. on board with like a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich like every day for, yeah, okay. for lunch. Just but find obviously, what you love. Nutrition <laughs> aside, all that kind of stuff. But. All right. It looks pretty healthy though. Sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, now for our question of the day. The study says the average American now spends 26 minutes a day doing this. All right, Denny? Okay, the answer is texting. Texting. Hey, okay. That seems low. That does yeah. low or high some days. Sometimes I, I want to get away from people. There Leave me alone. Have a we'll good see day, you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.